Hi there! Welcome to this video of my west side configuration during the winter. It is a subject I have been referencing for the past weeks a lot and I've explained it trying to show some pictures, but I don't think I've ever done a video while it is in full action, so to speak. So thank you for your curiosity. I appreciate that you're here for your time and I hope that you enjoy having a look-see what I've been talking about all these past weeks. Now, there's a lot of jiggling, a lot of moving, a lot of shuffling going on this time of year because I have the beautiful natural light of southern Spain to take advantage of. So my indoor setup is only there to protect the orchids from cold night temperatures and in the eventuality of cloudy days back to back to back, to supplement with additional light so that they don't go without for too long. But you can see that the rack that used to be on the east side is now here on the west side, and I still have a curtain down. And that is because right now at 2 p.m., it is a beautiful toasty 24 degrees over there, and all the terracotta is also giving a lot of warmth, which is awesome and I'm really pleased. I still do need to put the curtain down because you can see how lazy the wind is today. Something I appreciate a lot and the sun would actually cause some sunburn. But you can also see how now there's a bit more shade. So between 12 and 2 p.m. depending on how much airflow I get during the day that curtain stays down to protect the orchids that are there. But now that we are sort of Getting a little bit into the middle of the afternoon, the angle of the sun isn't as dramatic. I can lift the curtain and then let's have a look, see how I am going about shuffling the orchids so that they get the maximum light according to their needs during the season where light is muy importante and the heat some of them need as well. But first of all, you can see I've got my Vanda hanger here because at 10 o'clock in the morning, when it's been a chilly night, the sun comes up very, very quickly straight into this side of the patio, as opposed to on the east side, it is still lingering and waiting. It's shady, it's a bit cooler. So the moment the sun comes up at around 10 o'clock, this whole corner is already starting to be bathed in sunshine. So all my vandas hang here. What I normally would not do in the summer is have them exposed to such direct sun. Now with the winter sun, it's not that big a deal. And yes, I have to still miss them depending on how much wind I have at least two times a day because I've got them exposed to the sun. I also have a few mounts that I put up here just because they can handle some of the direct sun this time of year as well, but you can see it's more of dappled light. It's not as harsh and pounding down. Again, that is a very protected part of the hedge. When we have a breeze coming in from the west, as is the case today, and down here is cousin It, and he enjoys quite a bit of light and a direct sun as well now, because there is no danger of his leaves burning and he's coming into bloom. So I'm going to go and take the curtain up and let me explain to you what I'm trying to achieve with how I put the orchids on the shelf regarding their needs and hopefully accommodate them to the best of my ability. So now you see the difference with regards to the curtain being up and while I'm stood here right on the top up there are the Ancelia Africanas with full sun the moment I bring them out. My strategy is to somehow accommodate the two temperatures, outdoor and indoor temperatures, before I bring any orchids outside, because I have orchids in bud and spike indoors. And if I were to allow too much cool air in too soon in the morning, I could risk bud blast. So that is why by 10 o'clock, I'm already checking the temperatures in the grow area, comparing them to outdoors and making sure that by the time I open the door, it's not going to be that big of a temperature difference. But as soon as I get that okay kind of green light, temperatures matching, it is game on and the orchids come outside. So Ancelia Africana, they spend their entire time right on the top up there, full light, full sun, lots of airflow the way they like it. 
The next shelf down, I make sure to have orchids that can handle direct sun for as long as possible. Going by size and sun requirement needs, starting with the Rincalalia digbiana to the left and the Schomborkia thompsoniana right at the back behind that. And then, you know, Myrmecatavolas come next, next phase down. And then all the others as they are by size, and I also always respect the direction of light they were growing at while they were outdoors during the summer. So any new growths are facing exactly the same away from the light source. But as you can see with my Dendrobium tetragonum over there, it is facing towards the light source because that is how it grew while it was undercover in the south portico, which is my blooming alley during the summers. So depending on light, depending on how much heat they can take, depending how much direct sun they can take. These are the ones I focus on for this shelf below the Anseli Africanas. Another shelf below that are the ones that need a lot of light, but also a higher margin of humidity. Those include my Ascacentrum, Renantanda, Renanthera, and the Vanda Vietnamica in the back. Also, what I have down here are orchids that are growing actively, like a Dawiana, for example, or the Chantilly Lace Twinkle over there. All of those where I think I'm exposing them to too much light if I have them in the south area, I'm protecting them up against the hedge with a little bit more humidity accumulation in that area because I don't want the leaves to burn. They are not accustomed to direct sun, not in the summer, so I'm not gonna risk that for them in the winter. But as the angle of the sun starts to hit this shelf from 10, 10.30 a.m. and as I am bringing the orchids outside, this lower shelf gets direct sun and it is quite, quite toasty. So down comes the curtain in the meantime. And maybe you notice that the left side here, even though there is a curtain, the breeze blows open and closes, opens and closes. So the orchids that are in this line where the curtain opens and closes, they can still handle the direct sun. If, for example, the curtain were to snag and I didn't pick up on that, I wouldn't risk burning the leaves, but the ones in the back, they would be protected regardless. Now, the pot configuration is such that I am trying to get this job done quickly in the morning to maximize the time that can have natural light, but it is also more important for me to configure it this way with pot sizes as to how quickly I can bring them back again in the late afternoon by 5 p.m. I am hustling to get them inside because once again, my concern is that I don't have the terrace door open to my grow space for too long because when that sun is starting to go behind the hedge, it gets cold really, really quickly and I'm trying to protect the ambient air inside. So all these 15 centimeter pots, they have their one space under my shop light shelf and it's just boom, 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 boom. And I take them and I can just really quickly put them on the shelf. I don't have to think so hard. Helps to have them so close to the terrace door as well. And for that reason, these guys are in this configuration throughout the winter months. Right at the bottom are all the orchid tops from Afri orchids, the Sobenicofi Umbertiana, the Van der Glossum, Alexandra over there, the whole gaggle of orchid tops, which I had under the Rapiculus Lelia shelf that I have moved that is facing south. So this morning I thought, you know what, they get direct sun here for about two hours while I bring all the other orchids outside before I take the curtain down. So I figured I'm gonna give this a go and also because they need to come indoors very, very quickly before the temperatures drop. It makes a difference whether you take two orchid tops at one go and have to walk another three or four meters as opposed to I am right next to the terrace door right here and I can just walk them in, walk them in much, much faster. So that is a bit of a test. I do not want to deprive them of the bright light that they need. For the time being, I'm going to work it this way. If not, I'm going to obviously put them back on the south side underneath the Rapiculus Lelius where they get a lot more light from the facade as opposed to here. And then there's the Jumelia doing really well. And of course, I have a Mimrocophila to be seen is right at the bottom there because of the heat of the terracotta and the sun as it comes in directly to them. So when I build this shelf first thing in the morning, I am working in direct sun. As I then build the next shelf up, I then also start from left to right. 
These need a lot more light. They come out first, just like with my Digbiana and my Schomburgia. I work from left to right so that the ones that need the maximum amount of light are not lingering indoors while I'm building up everything else. I don't know if that makes sense, but that is what I'm trying to achieve here. And that is why the west corner here is very helpful to me during this time of year. And of course, to the right there, I have my Chao Praia and my Papilionantha stand. That doesn't move, that stays there no matter what time of year. A lot of spraying still going on because despite being cooler, I still have very dry humidity today. It's at 35% or something like that. And then you can see a little sneak peek of everybody that needs direct sun. Based on the angle of the sun, the corner by that stand gets all the direct sun and there is nothing standing in the way. So this is the configuration on the west side, the one I've been referring to for a long time, especially end of October, beginning of November videos as I was contemplating my switch up, who goes where, when. But here, now you can see it in action, probably for the next four months. Not something I'm too hip about, but we're gonna have to try and make it work as best as possible and then see who comes through healthy, doing well on the other side in spring of 2022. Thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Hope you're having a beautiful day on one condition, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.